So Brady's brought me here to the microscope suite at the Nanotechnology Center. Used to be a lab of mine. Now it's got some really great kit in it. And I've been told that they need to take one of my hairs. All right, Mark, go on then. All right. Should I kneel? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I'm tall. <laughs> right. I shall try to do this without taking any extra hairs than necessary. I'm not a hairdresser. Uh, sure. Work. So Mike is now putting my hair into a very sophisticated electron iron beam microscope. So my hair is now being put under vacuum. I don't think I've ever had any of my hairs put into a vacuum before. Might explode. They have a camera inside the machine so we can watch the hair while it's being maltreated. There are two sources, an electron beam and a beam of gallium ions. And they intersect, overlap at a particular place, and the computer knows where and my hair is being moved to that place. So, there's my hair. Doesn't look very smooth, my hair. You didn't choose a good one. So the fuzzy image is made with gallium ions. Yes. But the gallium ions hit my hair and produce electrons, which are used to make the image. The other one, you just fire the electrons and take the scattered electrons from that. So my hair doesn't conduct electricity. So it could all get charged up, stand on end. So Mike is bringing in a tungsten needle that will remove the charge so my hair will behave better than usual. This has to be done by hand. The computer isn't clever enough. Or perhaps Mike just enjoys flying it by himself. The machine's got some gallium inside it round about there. Just a little amount. They only have to fill it up every two years. Engineer comes, puts it in specially. And in this machine, the gallium is vaporized and the atoms are turned into ions which are accelerated to a high speed. So when they hit something, like my hair, they make a hole. And so you can machine things. You can make pictures. You use electrons to make the image because you can magnify much more than you can with a microscope and also it has a much bigger depth of focus so you can look at three-dimensional objects much more easily than you can in a microscope. Electrons when they're accelerated behave rather like light waves. The faster you accelerate them the shorter the wavelength and so the smaller the objects you can see with really high resolution ones, like the one over there, you can almost see atoms. Though then you have so much energy in the electron beam that the atom tends to be knocked out of the way. But here, we're not looking for atoms. My hair's full of atoms, but that's not the subject today. So the periodic table that they're drawing is 100 microns long, 50 high and you could get a thousand of them into five centimeters. That's a lot of periodic tables. No. One for each viewer. <laughs> I hope not. I hope we go higher than that. Yeah. I can see something. I can see you can see iron terrible. Oh I can see all of them copper zinc. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. So the electron beam looks as it is sideways. Here it comes. Oh, it's charging up a little. The charge is building up, which spoils yeah. the image a bit. That's pretty good. 
That's the iron beam again, isn't That's it? That's the iron beam, yes. yes. That's brilliant. Yes. Hydrogen seems to be lost. It is there, it's just it's a little crease in the yes. Thank you very much. We should say <laughs> Thank you Thank very you. much. It's the best present I've had. <laughs> Actually, I've only had two presents today, so but this one's the nicer. Thank you. <laughs>